I am the architect of my own destruction. Way back in 1989, the Prince of Persia franchise launched. There are a fair amount of releases, including a sequel to the original game and two reboot storylines. All of them have certain degrees of charm, yes, even Prince of Persia 3D, even though it was basically a ripoff of Tomb Raider, it still worked, it was fun, I mean it had its problems, but for what it was, it was at least enjoyable. But the series ended in 2010, why? Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks we ask the question, what killed the Prince of Persia series? The last time Ubisoft said they were going to be making a Prince of Persia game was in 2013. That was five years ago, and there ain't been one. And even that was after three years of not having one of the games. Yes, there was a remake of Prince of Persia 2 for iOS and Android, which is certainly a good game and holds up to this very day, in my opinion. But it's weird because it seems like there really isn't any talk about it. Somebody asked Ubisoft about it, like in June of 2017, and, well, they didn't even give a specific answer to Prince of Persia. They were just kind of like, no, nah, we're not opposed to revisiting older franchises. This is we have a lot on our play at the moment. <laughs> but to understand what effectively killed the momentum of Prince of Persia, we need to talk about a series that was born as a Prince of Persia game. It was originally called Prince of Persia Assassins, but you know it as Assassin's Creed. The creative director of Prince of Persia Sands of Time kinda just didn't want to do the same game again, and he started working on a different idea in which you were an assassin and you were tasked with protecting the Prince of Persia. In 2012, he talked about it saying it would have been awesome actually, but he was still happy with what happened. You know, making a new engine, making a totally new story, making billions and billions and billions of dollars for Ubisoft. Oh, Assassin's Creed was successful, and it still is, but that's also not what we're talking about. The original Prince of Persia series has done very well over a very long period of time. It is one of the original action platformers, so to speak, at least on the level that we sort of think of them today, and contained very fluid animation that frankly was very cool. Those two games have sold millions of copies. The first in the Sands of Time series, the 3D reboot that happened in the early 2000s, has sold 14 million copies which is insane for a game in that era. And when you consider the fact that Star Wars Battlefront 2's target sales figure is 14 million, a game attached to the biggest franchise on the planet, a random offshoot 3D game of a 2D platformer from the 80s is frankly amazing. Yes, it helps that that's over a long period of time, and Sands of Time is remembered as a pretty darn good game, because it is. Back in 2005 though, it had sold about 2 million copies, which is again, very, very good for the time. By the time the next game, Warrior Within, came out, however, they only sold about 800,000 copies. In fact, during the time that Warrior Within was out, Sands of Time sold better on an ongoing basis for its entire release cycle. And that's not a good sign. The Two Thrones did a little bit better because they ironed out a lot of the problems. Generally, it's a pretty high quality game. The fighting system's great. The graphics for the air are just amazing. And it's polished in a way that, frankly, a lot of things were not. But off in the background, there was something that was still happening. The creation of Assassin's Creed. While these games did decently to pretty darn good, Ubisoft was not prepared for what was going to happen when Assassin's Creed came out. In 2007, two things were happening. One was that Assassin's Creed was going to come out, and two, Ubisoft was developing a reboot for the next generation of systems to move Prince of Persia forward. Now with the release of Assassin's Creed, over the next year they sold about 10 to 11 million copies, which was more than any other game had done for them in its first year. This kind of success was totally foreign to Ubisoft, and when the following year happened, when the new Prince of Persia was due, almost exactly a year after Assassin's Creed and in its first year it sold 2.2 million copies, despite being a massive technology investment with tons of new animation techniques and lots of money spent. It just didn't do that good compared to Assassin's Creed. The era of 2.2 million being successful had passed. It was 
five years passed. It was over. The amount of money spent making video games has gone up steadily every single year. But to see that kind of discrepancy between their two star titles, one being a totally new IP that just blew up, and one being a very famous franchise that frankly had the name recognition to do very well, but did less than a quarter of the sales of the totally new thing that nobody had ever heard of before. I think to put it in the least crappy way possible, Ubisoft kind of knew that the moment for Prince of Persia was over. Like I said, lots of money was spent on Prince of Persia, and it didn't do what Assassin's Creed did. Assassin's Creed became the new important thing to do. And good lord, did they ever do Assassin's Creed. They made so many Assassin's Creed games between 2007 and today, and all of them did much better than Prince of Persia did on average, that the franchise of Assassin's Creed has sold over 100 million copies of games. I sincerely doubt that Prince of Persia has done that. And I mean like from 1989 to now, which is a tremendous head start over a 2007 franchise. Unfortunately, that's kind of the nature of business. It doesn't matter that there are actually a bunch of really good Prince of Persia games, it matters which games sell. And ultimately, the tracking, the repeated return, the profits that came in from the Prince of Persia series were pretty stable, but like I said, the cost of making a game that actually keeps up with the rapidly evolving mainstream standard of what a AAA game is, it just made sense to start putting resources into the one that made about four times as much money. And that's not to say that there will never be another Prince of Persia game. I kind of think that would be ridiculous, actually. When something does have the name recognition that Prince of Persia still enjoys to this very day, to declare it just totally unrevivably dead would probably be a little hasty. The thing is, Ubisoft will have to be able to make a game that keeps up with the sales of its other franchises. And that probably means something better than Prince of Persia 2008, because frankly, the interactivity in that game is so low, it's kind of peak press button to see thing happen type gameplay, including the combat system. So I think when the time is right, Ubisoft probably will give it another go, but I don't think they'll do it until they have an absolutely dynamite idea that will set the world on fire. Why? Because if they make another Prince of Persia game and it sells 2 million copies, they'll probably lose a lot of money on that deal in today's climate. What's your favorite Prince of Persia game? Leave us a comment, let us know. If it's not a series you ever played, maybe just check it out. If you like this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos all the time, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time, right here on GameRanks.